Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is, of course, Friday afternoon, and we've gotten our final um reports as far as uh players health and stuff and we seem to be very very lucky here uh knock on wood jake ferguson is looking like he is going to be playing on sunday and let's be clear here jake ferguson in his third year has become basically the number two weapon for the dallas cowboys there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And he was definitely missed last year. And you have to look at this from the standpoint of going back to even Troy Aikman, who had a multitude of weapons with Michael Irvin, um, you know, um, Alvin Harper out there, uh, Emmett Smith, a great offensive line and stuff. Shit would happen, and he would need um, – need him to become his security blanket. Jay Novacek was the guy that helped to save Troy Aikman's ass. Now, the great news on this one is, for me, is looking at what happened last week, we may actually have something that, out of necessity, and let me look it up real quick because um, I don't want to give you the wrong information. Let me look at the Cowboy stats. But last week, we saw... Probably the best game of Schoonmaker. Schoonmaker, who for the first time had to start. And Schoonmaker was actually making some plays. And you could see that Dak Prescott was definitely looking for the tight end because, of course, CeeDee Lamb was being covered more times than not. And the running game was ass ass. So, yeah, that was definitely. Um, wrong list um definitely a good thing and if we can get gotta make sure i put the year on there because it gave me all the cowboy stats forever um if schoonmaker can continue to pr uh, progress it may be that the cowboys what they'll be able to do is do more 12 personnel 12 personnel may be the thing that ends up helping our run game. Uh, getting back Jake Ferguson is key. And if you can employ, um, looking for his stats here, receiving, forgive me here. Luke Schoonmaker had six receptions for 43 yards, 7.2 yards per carry. Um, right now he's got one more catch. Then Jake Ferguson, who, of course, um, has five catches for, uh, I'm sorry, five targets. Schoonmaker was six of six. He was targeted six times, caught all six. 7.2 yard average. Uh, Jake Ferguson, week one, was targeted five times, coming down with three catches for 15 yards. If you can get both of these tight ends going and start using both of them, that may be what helps us without having a dynamic other receiver. And it may end up being what helps our running game. Because we can go back to the whole, you know, I've always been a 12 personnel kind of guy. Always been a 12 personnel kind of guy. And if you have two tight ends, if you think about um, – before Aaron Hernandez went, Aaron Hernandez uh, with Gronk, what they were able to do with that team without having great wide receivers, they were able to basically use those two guys as your playmakers. Well, here's the thing: a running game has been lacking. You've got two rookies, two rookies that are starting on the offensive line. If you go and use more twelve personnel, hear me out now: twelve personnel. You can basically put the defense on an island. You can force them to make a choice. Are you going to stop the run? In which case now, I've got seven guys to block. Seven guys to block. They're going to have to put eight men in the box. If they don't put eight men in the box, we're going to continue to run. And we'll double team on the edge and try and set the corner and go. You know, we'll do wham blocks with motion and things where we'll help out on the nose guard and do quick hitting dives up the middle and so on. If they do 
go to eight men in the box to try and stop the run, well, you've got now still two guys that can catch the ball along with two receivers. So now you've got eight men in the box. You've got four guys, potentially five, if you end up taking Zeke and using him outside or Rico or Deuce Vaughn. You can put that guy in motion and have an empty backfield going against an eight-man front, and it's going to be too late for them to change out of it. This may be the cure for the lack of playmaking wide receivers besides CeeDee Lamb and the lack of having great running ability, great dynamic running backs. And we'll be interesting to see with Jake Ferguson coming back, and I hope that he is really ready to come back. As a player, when your team loses, you want to get out there, and you will say, I'm always ready. You will always say, I'm ready, even though you may not be ready, and that may be the case with Jake Ferguson, you know, knowing that you don't want to start the season one and two. Now, now the thing, I don't want to go out here and say that this is a must win, but this is a must win in my mind. If you really want to get yourself in a good position. Now, theoretically, you've got the Eagles having a tough road game going to New Orleans. New Orleans is a tough place to play. And with the way New Orleans is running the ball, you definitely have a, a defense that's going to get run over. And right now, with Demario Davis and my boy John Ridgway, I think they're going to be able to do some damage to the Eagles without A.J. Brown. I think the Eagles are in trouble in this game, which helps you out if that is the case. If the Eagles lose at 1 o'clock, it takes a whole lot of pressure off you. But we don't want this just to be about keeping serve with the Eagles. You actually want to get yourself some separation. And this is where, if you can find a way to win against Baltimore, who is favored, okay, they're favored by one, on the road, says a lot about Baltimore, even though they're 0-2. If you can get this game and then have some momentum playing against the New York Giants, a team that you have owned since 2016, mind you, there is no give me in the NFL, that game may be the Giants' Super Bowl right there this year. That may be the opportunity on Thursday night to actually have a primetime game with an opportunity to, you know, feel good about something. So you know you're going to get their best game. And it's on the road for the Cowboys, which does not help. It's going to be a short week after having a tough, tough game against Baltimore. But you could conceivably, conceivably, lose to Baltimore, hopefully win against the Giants and end up being two and two. Not necessarily the worst place to be, but um, not as good as if you were three and one. So we'll see what happens on that. And we'll talk about this more tonight um, at our live stream coming up at nine o'clock Eastern. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. Peace out.